Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my show Future Friday. In today's episode, we're gonna take a look at ground effect train, a hyperloop killer maybe. So let's dive right into it. So what the heck is this ground effect train? All you have to understand is ground effect is a thing that happens of every aircraft once they come cl uh, close to any solid surface, be it water, as in like it's not gonna move uh, solid in compared to air. So once you come close to it, there is a, uh, a phenomenon which we call ground effect. Now you can uh, float on top of that and generally it's a bit of a hassle to deal with for normal aircraft. Simply because normal aircraft is built to, you know, uh, operate in a high altitude, it cannot utilize ground effect. Heck, it's a problem for them. So, but there are certain vehicles that you can build that utilizes that principle ground effect to fly directly now it's uh, the whole concept of this ground effect train is basically you have aeroplane and you have it on a track that's it there is nothing about it it's just plane on a track so then question becomes why the hell bother with this one simple reason efficiency ground effect induces a lot of drag in normal aircraft why because aircrafts are not built to extract utility out of it it's like uh, using us uh, they have to fight against this so they can work in a higher altitude so if you use ground effect itself for like you know propelling yourself there are two core benefits first your fuel consumption goes drastically down like dramatically down there is no competition here then on top of that your carrying capacity also goes up so efficiency goes there and in terms of speed when i'm talking about trains this can easily go to 400 to 500 kmph now of course you can keep it even slower like you can keep it 150 or 200 if you want to and of course your energy consumption will be less and your range will be increased but you can do that and on top of that it's safe your plane can fall out of the sky this is literally few millimeters to few inches above the ground so it's not gonna fall like inherently even if it lo loses power it will s slowly gradually uh, land itself without any intervention from uh, any computer or living creatures so there are certain unique benefits to this first being improved mileage then of course compared to other trains that would be fast it will be almost as uh, same speed as maglev and then of course it would be safer than air uh, air travel simply not by the fact that you know uh, you know a terrorist cannot blow it up or things of that nature is it will be safer inherently as in there is no point of falling in this so this is why we even want to consider this so how the heck this magic works now if you want to understand this in simplest term type a chronoplane in google and you will find it there have been a lot of research in this field so all you have is ground effect aircraft and it's moving in what we call its own channel basically the track now track is nothing fancy it's just u-shaped concrete blocks nothing magical about it so how the heck this is working now ground effect happens near to the ground now that near to the ground does not mean it has to be ground it has to mean a surface that is more dense than the air so basically concrete is definitely more dense so when you put uh, side channels also when you have like this uh, kind of scenario the wing when it gets too close to the surface like let's say it started to drift and it started very close to this the air trapped here will uh, push it back so this creates a self-centering effect so basically this uh, unless you uh, deliberately damage it it will never hit any side and uh, like if it let's say for some reason let's say your airfoil is like a bit unbalanced and it starts to you know shove it into one direction the air pressure there will push you back so by default you cannot crash into anything unless it's either badly designed or damaged so this is the whole point this u-shaped track it's basically simple concrete this is a plane which is specifically designed to be like a chronoplane there are many designs and uh, philosophies behind this now speed in practical terms it can go supersonic if you want to but uh, nobody would uh, uh, encourage that simply because at that speed uh, ground effect is no longer prof profitable for you so it it has to be subsonic it cannot exceed supersonic and uh, for uh, realistic purpose 500 kmph is generally classified as like the top like you can push it higher than that but it's at that speed it's not uh, you know yielding you any significant results so are there any problem to this magical idea now first and foremost problem is power delivery this is the reason why you don't see it everywhere even though in principle it's cheaper simpler in every regard in every other uh, comparison against it it's just the power delivery is the mechanism that's stopping us basically how you gonna power it now you have one simple option uh, you have onboard fuel basically whatever be it battery be it super capacitor be it jet fuel whatever you have you have onboard it now benefit the track cost as in uh, your track would become basically a concrete channel 
generally because fuel is involved nobody wants to deal with this okay now other option is track based basically you will have some way to leech off electrical power from the track and then power your onboard uh, propellers that's uh, option number two benefit your track is a bit more expensive but not ludicrously more expensive now third option it is track propulsion itself basically track itself is propelling you like a maglev now like okay wouldn't that make it as expensive as maglev well no because maglev i have to spend energy in multiple ways first way is basically levitation second way is to make sure it's not hitting any side so here you will only need to do basically propulsion how can you do that roller coaster already do that linear induction motors can already do that so it's not magical system and you want to see linear induction motor in large scale there are certain metros in this world that utilize it. something like this right now as of now uh, in you know linear induction motors so basically this aluminum plate itself is uh, you know there uh, on tracks and motors on the track uh, basically on the train is using it uh, as a like pushing basically it's pushing on that now in this scenario it will be inverted so your it's basically like a maglev is only a cheaper version of it that's why nobody even wants to consider this track propulsion however this will give you the highest speed and it still would be cheaper than a maglev so what kind of cost we are talking about everything is fine and dandy every idea is fine and dandy you can check my video about hyperloop scam there it's like hyperloop can be built undeniably so nothing in this says like you know oh hyperloop is breaking the laws of physics it's super easy to build it's just cost of it when you see the bill of it it's like yeah no just no just no so that's the whole point cost matters at the other end because this is a public project this is what your tax paper will pay so you cannot have a scenario where you're like okay only elite people can uh, you know uh, ride on those that's not gonna fly so you have to make sure the cost is low now inherently it's cheaper than uh, you know maglev even though if you introduce track based propulsion where your track has induction motor a it will need much less of them because as you can see like this is a U channel for sink and shin this one and as you can see all sides have uh, electromagnets and it's very complex so compared to this versus a normal uh, Akrano plane based train yeah this this is three times more expensive so flat out compared to maglev there is no competition and then track cost uh, compared to what uh, like okay let's say maglev nobody is even thinking about it what about high speed trains now in high speed trains that depends if you have onboard fuel flat out this, this this will compare to like this will become equivalent of free like you don't have to worry about it it's just free it's like yeah concrete that's it nothing fancy about it so but uh, if you are comparing it against let's say shinkansen uh, railway line then yeah the cost starts to come close but if you can do power uh, delivery directly to the craft so it has a uh, you know its own propulsion motors and uh, turbine to provide uh, air pressure that way the cost goes up but not as much as like you know a high speed rail network so you still have a scenario where you can easily build the high speed railway so in cost wise it's actually very very feasible then we come to the fact is there a hope for it if there, is there a future about this well it is a low hope thing i will not put my money on this well let's just put it that way because it is limited by one core factor how the heck you're going to deliver the power if you can deliver the power to it like wirelessly or on cheap because be mindful whenever you are talking about this sort of system it's not that okay it wirelessly delivers power and that's about it it's like how long uh, of a track you need to deliver power how much uh, cost per kilometer starts to it. because right now if you just let's say this has onboard fuel this is the cheapest means of transport but nobody wants to do that like because that then you become reliant on fuel prices so if there is a way to transfer electrical energy to this either by supercapacitor or something like that and uh, it does not take too much uh, infrastructure in terms of cost per kilometer in terms of tracks tomorrow you're going to start seeing this because this has certain advantages now because it is running in a u channel it's not affected by weather basically you can have turbul uh, of course you will have some turbulence if weather is like a cyclone is going around but uh, nothing serious and in terms of uh, whether there is snow unless it's like fully snowed in there is no issue than that water no issue leaves no issue so <laughs> There is a lot of hope in this technology and I have provided the link to a paper down below where they discuss that they are building a small scale models and things of that nature. So if we solve the power issue, tomorrow you can start seeing this. So as of now, I will not count this out of the race yet, but um, that power issue is a big issue. So this was my presentation on 
ground effect train i hope you liked it or learned from it in that case please leave a like if you didn't don't worry about it. you can press dislike press it twice now uh, i would urge you to leave a comment uh, because i reply to all of them and uh, please subscribe press the bell icon if you are free and as always thanks for watching